aloha and welcome to the number 14 of our series, the Hawaii Women in Business series. We're delighted that you're able to join us here live for this webinar uh, or if you're listening to our recording. Either way, um, we've got some valuable information to share with you. My name is Annette Lynch. I'm Director of Communications with Maui Economic Development Board and I just have a, a little bit of instructions for you before we dive in. So we are talking about opening doors with women and minority owned small business certification that all the benefits of certification what they can do for your business um, if you haven't done so already um, make sure your name is appearing so we know who you are on the call if you want to pop in your organization in there as well so we know know a little bit more about you we do ask you to please remain muted uh, unless you're called to speak at the end we will have time for q a and you'll be able to make uh, that known by either popping a question in the chat or raising your hand um, <laughs> physically using the uh, digital chat, or if you do you know, shake your hand about. We will be recording this um, obviously, and we'll make that available. Look out for an email to, when that is available for you. So I'm going to pass the mic to President and CEO of Maui Economic Development Board, Leslie Wilkins, to share a few words and introduce our guest speaker. Well, I thank you, Annette. I appreciate it. Thank you for your help in organizing this and also Leilani Ventura, who I think is helping drive the slides from our conference services team. Um, we're delighted to have you here. We could not let Women's History Month, which is the month of March, pass without convening an event in our Women in Business Seminar Series. I'm exciting on the number that we've been doing this. You know, it started... Um, during COVID when we could not convene in purpose and knowing the busy schedules of every woman, every woman I know, um, it's one of the benefits that came out of COVID is that we learned how to uh, convene together virtually and share information. So today we have a good group of businesses joining us. I think we are, um, we have some slides showing who's here. So um, it looks like most people in the Zoom room today or who signed up are, are startup companies. So this is a perfect time to start thinking about what certification can bring to you as you're launching your business and putting your paperwork together and your ownership strategy, et cetera. And then it looks like the business structure, which I think this is a trend, we're seeing more and more of it that people are choosing to use an LLC structuring for the business. And that's certainly reflected today in those of um, you that are joining us. And business type, this is based on S, um, SC uh, data. And so you can see that we have a lot of folks in the arts, entertainment, and recreation business, um, public services, excluding public administration, and then professional services and retail trade. So it's a really nice mix of different kinds of businesses. So um, nice conversation we'll have today. So it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Actually, um, we have loved our partnership with WeBeck. It's an acronym like everything is. It's Women Business Enterprise Council. Uh, they are the Western region of which Hawaii falls under. We'll tell you what all falls under her jurisdiction. But they have really, really helped us understand the benefits of becoming certified. We are first to say it's an arduous process. It's a lot of paperwork. But Webeck is there to really guide um, our businesses through that process. And then the benefits afterwards, the teaming opportunities, having your list on procurement lists with big companies that are looking to procure for women-owned businesses, they do it all. And so it, um, this is, I think, our third year in formal partnership uh, because they really do handhold, give encouragement when you hit, you know, the SAM uh, registration that keeps rejecting and rejecting. They're there to encourage you through it. So um, Maria Boykin, who has been to Hawaii to lead some of these in person, we hope she can come back soon, is joining us. Um, she has actually been uh, with Webeck West since 2009, and she has 20 years of customer service experience. That clearly shows through with how engaging she is. She is the director of certification, which means she leads Webeck West's uh, team. She has the responsibility of implementing the national certification standards and procedures, and get this, all these states, 
Arizona, Colorado, Hawaii, Nevada, Southern California, Utah, Wyoming, and the territories of American Samoa and Guam. And she just shared with me before we opened that they have met their goals of women's certification in the state of Hawaii for 2023. She's also active in a variety of civic and cultural organizations, including community partnerships, emergency shelters, and as president of the Confirmed Word Ministries. So on that note, Maria, it's delightful to see you, even though it is virtually, and thank you for sharing um, sharing your mana'o with us. I'm on mute. Thank you so much, Leslie. It's always nice to see you guys and a pleasure to, to have gotten to know you guys. So thank you so much for everything you do for uh, the We Back West organization, because you guys are a great supporter of our certification process as well and like I said earlier we met our numbers for 2023 and we were I was celebrating it and when I was celebrating I was thinking about the Maui Development Center because you guys done a lot to bring in women business owner and not just in education but the fact too that you assist them with certification so we appreciate you guys so much thank you so much to you Leslie and Annette and the team that Liani, that team that you have behind you, because that's monumental, right? So let's move into certification world. Bear with me, I got off of one. I just didn't, I just did the whole presentation differently. Well, we appreciate you customizing it for us. <laughs> I did. I talked to Let Annette and she's like, you only have this much minutes. I'm like, okay, let me just start shrinking pages and see. <laughs> so let me see. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you for your patience. So welcome to today's uh, ins and outs of the WeBank certification. And like Leslie said earlier, there's a lot of acronyms that are gonna be said during this pre presentation. WeBank stands for the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. So we back West, which is us, we're actually the Women Business Enterprise uh, West Council. So, um, Welcome so much, so much for today's, and I, like I said, I'm excited for the presentation. So there are two types of certification when it comes to our organization. We're one of 14 regional partners of the WeBank National Council. So WeBank is a third leading party certifier women-owned business nationally, and we are a leading advocate for women business owners as well as entrepreneurs. We are also known by Corporate America as the gold standard of choice. I just got off a meeting that I have with some staff members of my team and the WeBank staff member because um, people understand that the reason why the process is the way it is is because it's valuable and because we have to vet you. So we have to vet the woman business owner to make sure that she meets the criteria. There's two types, again, the WeBank certification and the WSB. So the WSB, which is the Woman-Owned Small Business Certification, WeBank actually had the honor to become a third-party certifier. And the women business owners who are eligible to, uh, to be certified, they compete for federal contracts that are set aside under the federal program. So there are some other, several other types of certification that I'll briefly cover like minority, the minority certification through the National Minority Supply Development Council. There's the veteran owned certification and that's VET first verification program and the National Veteran Owned Business Association Certified Veterans Business Enterprise. We have the LGBTQ national certification. We have the small disadvantage certification. There's actually a Hubson certification that a lot of them, they're national. And the Hubson is actually based on your area and is a historical underutilized business zone. That's what Hub Zone stands for. And it is a program with the goal of growing businesses in historically underutilized areas. And, by, and they award uh, contracts at least 3% of federal contracts. So there's a lot of opportunities and I like to share because, you know, we don't ever want to think that maybe the WeBank certification may not fit you, 
but there's a lot of other certifications that may fit your organization. So we always, you know, we're not very selfish and we always like to share information. So, so the WeBank organization was founded back in 1997. I actually been with WeBank West since 2009. I was reminded that on our conf on our conference this year by actually talking to my first site visit that I conducted in Southern California. So that was a shocking moment to be driving through Southern California. And if you've never been there, uh, God bless you, because <laughs> they keep growing, right? So again, we're the third party certified in the nation for women owned and operated business. And back in 2011, we were actually um, designated as a third party certifier for the SBA and we still hold him strong. So I'm, I'm very honored to share that with you guys. Uh, and then we're a leading advocate of the women business enterprise and women businesses. So as Leslie mentioned, this is our territory. So We Back West is uh, one of the We Bank 14 regional, there's 14 little hub zones. And as you can see on the map, we're on the purple, the dark purple side. And so uh, we actually take care of the territory of Guam and American Samoa. And we're in Arizona, Colorado, Hawaii, Nevada, Southern California. And Southern California is Bakersfield South and Luis Obispo South. So that's our territory for Southern California, Utah, Wyoming. The rest of the territory, there's 13 others, as you can see on the map, that actually they oversee the certification for WeBank. In our WeBank national corporate members list, we have over 540 corporation and government entities. I actually got to see a lot of them uh, last week at the national conference in Denver, Colorado, which is one of our territories. And it was amazing to get to see how many corporations were on the trade show floor. Um, I put a picture of some of our corporates. So we have Disney as a corporation. We have MGM Resorts. We have Chevron. We have AT&T. We have uh, Starbucks is a partner of ours. We have utility companies. Those are some of the uh, some of them. Uh, we Back West right now has a total of sixty eight corporations under our umbrella. So we have sixty eight corporations. So. The WeBank brand, this is very important. So, you know, a lot of people may not know. So there's two logos, the WBNC and then the woman-owned uh, logo. And the reason why we brought out the woman-owned logo is actually for individuals that have products on the shelf. So you can actually put that logo in your products on the shelf here in uh, Arizona and the, in the mainland, as you guys call it. Um, it, I, I always go shopping and look for that logo because I want to promote and actually make sure that I fuel the economy by buying from women-owned own businesses. So I, I wanted to share so you guys can see that because it's very important for you guys to recognize the women-owned logo. Um, the mission behind the women-owned logo is it is to fuel the economy growth by building Consumer movement of support for women businesses. We Bank and We Back West goal is to support women entrepreneurs and those whose businesses are raising awareness regarding why, where, and how to buy women owned products and services. Um, the Women Owned is an initiative from the Women Business Enterprise National Council, and we connect. They created the movement to support women-owned businesses. So you ask, okay, so why buy women-owned? Uh, there's a there was a study that was done back in 2019, and there was an estimate of 13 million women-owned businesses in the United States. They're they're employing nearly 9.4 million people and generating 1.9 trillion in revenues. That was 2019. There haven't been an update on the study, but that 1.9 trillion. So when I'm talking to a woman business owner, can you imagine the slitter of that piece of the pie that you can actually have? Think about it. 
you know, 1.9 trillion. That's that's a lot in revenues that is being generated by, by women business owners. Because we always encourage women to do business with women. If you start up a business and you may not be at a level that you can do business with those corporations in, in high caliber, you can still do business with each other. So just remember that because I, when I was sitting at the conference and walking around, I watched women business owners buy things from each other. And that's, that's an amazing thing to do. So women supporting women. So as of 2019, women owned business account for 40% of all businesses in the United States, but only 8% of overall business revenue, 8% even though there's 42% of all businesses. Studies have shown that women reinvest up to 90% of their income in their families and communities compared to 40% for men. So next time you're running around doing errands and shopping, keep a lookout for the women on logo. This, this is actually monumental and it actually helps fuel our economy. Again, there is there is a time when a woman-owned business is being faced with challenges in advancement, but now there are multiple of opportunities to leverage this differentiator by using the woman on logo. So today's top women-owned industries thriving are professional services, healthcare, wellness, and fitness, apparel and accessory, consumer goods, personnel services marketing and PR, education and training, arts and entertainment, food and beverages. Must do tips before applying. This is this is my, my biggest thing to share with everyone because it kind of helps you to go through the process. So the, the tip, the one of the biggest tip is to review the WeBank standards and procedures. We have an open book. And our WeBank standards and procedure tells you what will make your organization qualify for the WeBank certification. So we have a lot of people. There are some individuals that use Rocket Lawyer or um, what's the other one? forgot. But just remember that you have to look at the documents to make sure that you meet the WeBank standards and procedures. And like I said, we're an open book. You can download the WeBank standards and procedures. Make it your homework because it's a lot of information to read, but it's very helpful for you to understand how your company's structure should be if you would like to apply for the WeBank certification. I always tell individuals when they don't meet the criteria and they are unfortunately receive a letter of denial, they can operate their company the way they wish to operate. However, when it comes to applying for the WeBank, certification you you cannot have a restriction you cannot be restricted from being able to uh, get a loan of ten thousand dollars or up to ten million you cannot be restricted by someone else in your in your organization that has ownership so you cannot be restricting from the sale of assets and i always use this example if you're if you are a logistic company and you are looking to get a contract and you're needing X amount of money, you know, you may want to sell, uh, you know, a few of your, maybe you have trucks, you know, and so 18 wheelers, you have them. So you may want to sell them, but then, but you're restricted according to your governing documents, you're restricted from doing that because it needs unanimous consent or you need consent of all members or owners in the organization. So that's why I'm using this example so you can understand that. If you're going to meet a contract, remember, all those corporate supply diversity individuals know each other. If you fail to meet a contract, they all will speak about you. So just always remember that this is why we back West make sure that we do our due diligence to review the documentation. The committee goes and review the documentation. We ask, ask for, for a lot of information in order to make sure that you are providing the information needed. Because sometimes individuals forget to put in the correct um, resume. 
the most current resume. Sometimes they forget to uh to update their bylaws or their operating agreement. Sometimes they forget that they have this loan or they may have a document that's restricting them. Um, just keep that in mind because the our certification committee is, is very meticulous. They review the information. I have a lot of people that have been there for a long time and all they do is follow the standards. So they're not inventing anything different. Again, download the standards and procedures. Complete a thorough review of your business documents, such as your ownership. You know, make sure you have 51% or more as a woman-owned business when it comes to applying for certification with us. Um, you can't have 50%. Cannot be 50-50. It has to be 51% or more. The only way it will be 50-50 if it's two women. Okay? Then you meet the criteria. And ownership. Uh, make sure that you check your financial structure and that you you have all your ducks in a row, your personnel, your management, your governance, which is the governing documents. And before you start the process, print out the list of the required documentation. And then I always tell individuals, check off the ones you have. You may look at the list and say, oh my God, this is a lot of documents that they're asking. However, if you really read the list, some of them may not apply to you, but some of them are mandatory. So look at the mandatory. I, I'm 100% sure you have them all. So just keep that in mind. So you gather all the information, get the list, check off the ones you have, whatever you don't have, you know, just shoot me an email, call me. I have individuals that always say, oh my God, you answer your phone? Yes, I answer my phone. So just make sure you can feel free to call me so that way, you know, we can talk because sometimes it's just clarification that you need and you probably already have the document. So those are tips that I always give individuals because when your paperwork is coming in and you're saying you're 51 owned, control and operational, we want to make sure that your documents are actually showing that based on the WeBank standards. WeBank standard eligibility. So again, as I mentioned earlier, is based on ownership. The applicant company must be at least 51% owned by one or more women who are United States citizen or permanent legal residents. So if you have a working visa, that doesn't qualify you for the WeBank certification. Um, um, operational control, the woman owner should be able to do management and daily operation of the company and must be controlled by one or more women. The information again, it will be listed in your operating agreement, your partnership agreement, your bylaws. That's where the committee looks to see for your control. Like I mentioned earlier, is the words are a key to your operating agreement. So if you see somewhere where it has control about unanimous control or decisions made by all members or by all owners, that's not, that the female is not doing things on her own she is actually needing the whole team to actually make a decision and that's not a WeBank certification criteria. Independence. So you have to be independent and have the ability to perform in the area of specialty and expertise without reliance upon finances or resources um, such as equipment or facilities of males or non-women business enterprises. So let's say I own a company and my, I'm actually, my company is in, in my brother's uh, warehouse. I don't have a lease agreement. I don't pay him anything. Um, I have this space that I'm renting. It's almost half the building, but I have no documentation showing that, that I am not being supported by him. Do you understand? So you gotta make sure that you don't don't substantially rely upon a male or a non-women business enterprise. So in that case, you know, get a lease between you and that individual. Monthly payment uh, is is actually listed in that lease because you have to make sure that you have independence. United States citizens and legal residents. At least 51% of the woman on control must have 51%. So if the other 49 does not have it, it's okay. We need 51% of the female and the, the individual that is in control to have United States citizenship or be a lawful 
permanent resident. Our organization has a two-part process to ensure every WeBank certified business meets our criteria and our standards. This includes a thorough review of the documentation presented and a site visit interview with the female owner. No males are allowed in the interview, um, even if for translation. And I'm bringing that up because that's that's been happening a lot lately. So just please know that we're doing the interview with a female owner that has 51% or more ownership. That individual, sometimes I had a, an individual talk to me, um, my first site visit in 2009, she shared with me at the WeBank conference last week. I was so nervous, I was so scared. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what you were wanting to do. What do you wanna see, what's going on? We have a questionnaire of questions that we ask. We sit there, I spend a lot of time training my site visitors on keywords for them to hear the keywords that actually will either have an antenna stand up and say, does she actually own, control, and operate the business? Because I always tell the site visitors, go outside the box and don't, so if you see, hear something that doesn't align, then ask more questions. The site visitors are private detectives. That's who I call them. They're going in, they're going to do the services. We have in-person services and we have virtual services. So I always make sure that everyone is trained both in-person or virtually to be able to ascertain if this company do meet the WeBank standards and procedure. The certification process is 90 days. And once you get notified that your file has been complete, so it's not 90 days from when you started the application, it's 90 days when we received all your documentation, we stop sending you questions for you to answer, and you get an email saying your file has been complete. At that time, your file gets slated to a committee review. So that's the 90 day process. That's when the clock starts ticking. The benefits of certification at a national and regional level, um, as I mentioned before, we have a, a lot of corporations nationally. We have 68 corporations locally within WeBack West. Once you become a certified women business owner at a local level, you have access to that list of, cert of corporations. You have a, a you were able to participate on face to face virtual or virtual matchmaking sessions. Um, you have an eligibility to exhibit at a booth. So we were just at the WeBank conference, and we had a lot of women business owners that are on there, our organizations that were actually exhibiting at a booth. We have the Freaky Cookie, and she actually we they WeBank did something new. They have sellers to have their own area to present their products. That was amazing. One of the ladies that we have, her uh, her name is Sheila and she does the freaky cookies. So, and they're delicious. I had to stay away from her booth for a minute. She was, she was keep giving me cookies. I'm like, I'll take them home. <laughs> so you have that opportunity. You have informal and targeted networking with corporate members and other certified women business owners. At the national level, it's actually mirrors almost the same. Mm -hmm. um, you have actually, when you become certified with WeBank West, you become certified with WeBank. So you have access to all of the corporations and 540 plus. You have access to all of them. You do have formal and formal opportunities to pursue business with corporations, government members, uh, or other certified WBEs. At the conference, they have non-strategic matchmaking, and uh, those were called meet, uh, meet and greet, and they were very successful. Uh, I had a few staff members that actually volunteer and they helped manage the room and they saw how busy it was. Uh, I had a woman business owner from Colorado Spring who came and she came and pulled me to the side and she just got awarded a contract during that conference. So and it's a million dollar contract and she's a construction company in Colorado Springs. So just, I, I like to share success so you guys can see that it can be done. It can be done. So just keep that in mind. So how does corporate supplier diversity member able to locate your company? 
So in our system, when you complete an application, you have an opportunity to put in your keywords for the product or service you provide. So just keep that in mind. It's, we only need keywords. We don't need a resume. We don't need your history. We need keywords in order for it because when the corporates are looking for a business, they're looking for based on your keywords. So um, Dr. Pamela Williamson, who I serve under, had a strategy that she moved them to place. And I was grateful because, you know, I used to do the searches and I used to look for the people and it was time consuming. But she brought in a staff member now that this individual holds webinars. And if you're interested on, on going through the webinars to learn more about keywords, let me know and I'll send you her information. But um, her name is Bowen and Bowen actually is there making sure that she helps our applicants to put in the correct keywords that actually um, are categories that the corporations are looking for. So let's say you are a company that provides promotional products. Few of the keywords you can use is awards, uniforms, t-shirts, sales screening, label pins, buttons, um, trade show items, engraving, notebooks, giveaway. If you're a company that provides services, let's say such as a staffing agency, technical recruitment, IT staffing, job placement, consulting, software engineer, you can target maybe the areas that your staffing company actually provides services for, like, you know, a programmer, network engineer, machine learning, um, project managers. So this is why our corporations, a corporate supply of the risk free members are able to locate your company because we actually invested time. We invested in an employee to be able to set up your profile to be searchable. Strategies to find corporate opportunities. So I always say, you know, um, the biggest the biggest advocate for women owners is our board. So if you go into our We Back West site and you pick three companies that the We Back West board works under, <clears throat> excuse me, we have Anke from Disney. I have Tanya from Aflag. Um, who else? Metropolitan Water District. That's Ken Ashford. We just got Deborah Mackin from Arrow. She's brand new. She just became a board member. <clears throat> TJ from Republic Services. Republic Services do a lot of the um, trash collecting. So go and pick three of the companies and then go and look at their profile. Go and see where you fit in in that company. Where do I fit in with Disney, with Starbucks, with Target, with Walmart? Where do I fit in with these companies? Attend events and build relationship with them because it's all about you getting to know them and them getting to know you. So a lot of times I know companies and they're, they're, one of the corporations may call and say, Maria, I need, I need to get a supplier in this area. And so, you know, if you're looking for a landscaper, like Cox was looking for a new landscaping company, SRP was looking for a security company. SRP is a utility company in Arizona. So I have a lot of information in my brain from people that have come through certification. But when we pull them, we give them a list. We give the individual a list, a corporate list for them to pick from and have a conversation with those women business owners. That's a key. So the biggest key, I learned this from a corporate member. And he said at an event, he said, make sure that not only the president, the CEO, the VP, the chief operating officer knows about the fact that you apply for the WeBank certification. Let everybody in your organization know. So when somebody answers that phone, they know who's calling and for what. Because you can miss an opportunity. They will make a phone call looking for you to see if you can provide your information for a possible RFP. But if the person that answers the phone says, who, what? They're not calling again because they are looking for key people and they're looking to make sure 
that that organization understand because it doesn't start from the top. I was just telling my staff, anything that happens in certification falls on my shoulders, right? So you guys as women business owners, anything that, that happens in your company falls on your shoulders. You're not only providing an income, supporting your family, but you're supporting a lot of families if you have other employees. So it's always great to make people inclusive. Dr. Pamela Williamson is a huge strategist, and she wants to make sure that our whole organization is included when things happen. So when someone calls and some, because people like to push buttons if they, you don't answer right away, like I say, I answer the phone. I have the information to give them, right? It's the same thing with you. Attend events, build relationships, take advantage of matchmaking meetings, register in the corporate vendor portals. So the portals will ask you, are you a, a certified? And then ask you with who? So when you're actually going through the process, know that when you're going to the vendor portals, it's gonna ask you if you're certified. So We Back West has a processing fee. It's, in a, it's an annual processing fee and you're paying every year because you also do a recertification of your application annually. And if you're from zero to under a million, is 350, 1 million to 4.9 is 500, 5 million to 9.9 .9 is 750, 10 million to 50 million is 1,000, 50 million to 1250 is, I mean, sorry, 50 million and above is 1250. Again, we are an open book. If you go into www.wbnc.org, you will find the processing fee. So um, may I just make a quick comment on that, Maria? This is yes. Leslie. Um, again, thank you for being so transparent. I just wanted everyone to know that because MEDB has a grant from the Small Business Administration Community Navigator, we are partnering with WeBank. And if you are a registered business within Maui Nui, Maui County, and you meet the criteria of 51% ownership, leadership, decision-making, MED, we will pay these fees for you. So you'll be scholarship, but this grant is in its final quarter. So please make the, um, this determination quickly and apply. You don't have to be totally completed with the process, but you have to have a firm commitment in so that we can pay your fee. So sorry, I didn't mean to disrupt, but I, no, I you're to, fine. knew we to know that we're, um, we're supporting this. No, and, and thank you, Leslie, because I, I don't step on toes and I wasn't sure if I was privy to share that information. So thank you so much for interrupting because it is. So like she said, it is on the final stages of the grant. So um, put in the application. And if you're coming in with a grant, send me an email so that way I can give you instructions on how you submit because the submission is different. Um. And this is a great opportunity, guys. So just FYI. So important things to remember about certification. It is actually a tool. It does not guarantee that you're going to get contract because what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So it's like this morning I was talking to one of our company. I was talking to Bowen. She's the one that does our sourcing and she's upstate keywords. And I was talking to her and I was telling her, I miss my workout this morning. I miss drinking my water this morning. Guess what? If I don't put it in, I'm not going to get results, right? So Maria's not going to get results with her Weight Watch. <laughs> so whatever you put into certification is what you're going to get out of. So it's, it's up to you. It's up to the hard work. You're already working hard. You you know, the, the biggest thing that you did today was join us. You know, you join us in the web, webinar. Now you got a lot of information that you got to process. I send the um, slide presentation to Annette that she can share with you guys. If you need to or you want, you know, just connect with Annette and she'll share it. Like I said, it's what you put in it. It's what you're going to get out of it. Any questions or answers regarding the WeBank side of certification? We have a couple of questions in the chat, so I will share those with you right now. Um, we had a question, what is the ultimate benefit of becoming certified? You mentioned um, some, some benefits of working with different companies, but can you sum that up for Daya? So the ultimate benefit is building relationships 
getting to know each other, getting to know the women businesses. And yes, your ultimate goal is to be able to get a contract from Disney, from Toyota, from Caesar, from Robert Half, from Kaiser Permanente. That's your ultimate goal. But if you can't get there right away, and I'm going to use an example. We have a young lady. She started certification. She started with $10 in her bank, her business bank account. She's now at $4.5 million after seven years of working certification, 4.5 in seven years. So, you know, and she's consistently holding that 4.5 million. So, you know, their, their benefits is to get to know the community of women business owners because we're very supportive of one another. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Candace asked, and she says, Aloha from Maui. She says, Astute Consulting based on Maui. How does a site visit work with an at home business? Any additional documentation requirements for that? Great question. So we do virtual services. We have, if you are a manufacturer or you're a distributor, we have to do the site visit in person. Or if the committee um, or myself or the president requests an in-person site visit or um, a corporation requests an in-person site visit for, because of some discrepancy. But what happens is we do a virtual, if it's virtual, we do it via zoom.com or via teams.com and we do the interview virtually. Um, we come to your house because even though you own a business, a lot of people after COVID have gone virtual. You still have to have a space in your home where you do business. So we have to validate that you still have a space that where you operate. And documents usually is you're sharing to see who are signers in your company. So we may ask you to show us on the screen a contract that you have available. It's not a negative. If your company started a year ago, we're not expecting you to have a contract right away, right? So it's not a negative, but those are the documents that we ask for. Great, and I've just got a question, um, and this might be one more for, for Leslie about, I know the um, our grants are limited to Maui-based businesses. Um, asking, uh, someone's actually answered about organizations on how, on Oahu that help with the application fee, and there's YWCA and EWOC, which I'm not familiar with. I know that YWCA, so that's so a great e help. EWOC is under YWCA. It's the yeah. Enterprising Women and of Color um, organization that they are also scholarshiping. Um, if you're registered in the state of Hawaii, um, let us know and we'll see how we can make connections for you um, on, I know YWC and, and EWOC are doing for Oahu. Um, I just had a question about Oregon, but part of that business is owned on Maui. So we'll talk offline, Casey. Good information, see? Great information, guys. Thank you. We may get some more questions, but right now I'm, I'm going to, um, unless you wanted to add anything more, Maria, I'd like to pass the microphone to Brandy Kajudoy of Kajudoy Construction, who's going to share uh, with the group a little bit on her experience with certification uh, from, you know, what were their expectations beforehand? How did that fit your expectations? But did you want to add anything before we go there, Maria? Yeah. So before we go there, we also, I didn't bring up and I cut my presentation so much that, um, but we have the WOSB, which is a woman owned small business to do business with the federal government. And what happens with that certification, if you're denied in the front end by the WeBank WB, we don't move forward. But if you're certified and you meet the criteria, so generally it goes quicker uh, than the process with the SBA because of the fact that we already vetted you as a woman owner. We're looking to make sure that you meet the criteria based on the SBA. And a lot of people, if you're certified with WeBank, you may meet the criteria. The only time you don't do it is based on the type of trust that you hold, uh, control, and day-to-day -day operations. But um, that's, you know, that's a lot of information. But like I said, you know, we do the WSB as well. And so after you get certified with WeBank, we have a 30 day window to complete the WSB, which is actually a smaller time frame than the SBA is having right now. So just FYI, I'll stop sharing. 
Great. Thank you, Maria. Any questions you. on that? Think about those questions, but I'm going to pass it on. Brandy, would you like to unmute yourself? Looks like you're unmuted and uh, and share with the group your experience. Yeah, so um, thanks for inviting me. My experience has been a little different because I am in construction. So for me, the way I kind of got started was COVID hit and we were still essential. So we were still um, building and doing things but um, we, me and my husband had started to make a business plan. So our plan was that we wanted to start serving locally and then kind of make our way up. And so in the meantime, I was like, you know what? I want to get a couple of certifications so that when we do grow, I have it ready to go and we don't have to like stop, go, stop, go. So what I did first was when we were, I did a couple of um, networking things with small business administration on Oahu and we did networking with the, um, the prime contractors and that's kind of how I got involved and I was opened up to the women-owned business certifications there's 8a certifications there's so many different certifications and they all benefit you in different ways but I feel like the women-owned business one um, was really it's not like I know they tell you whenever you're going through the process that you're still going to have to work and go find those jobs. And that is very much true. It is very much true. But I've actually found out that they actually do come to me. And I don't know if it's because I'm in construction, because a lot of these companies, the big corporations, they have to meet that quota. Whether they're involved with federal government monies or not, they need to meet this quota if they're going to have that, you know, they got to reach a 5% woman-owned business or 5%, you know, DBE, the disadvantaged um, businesses. So for me, um, I knew I needed to get something. And I am going to give um, credit to Maria Vila, I think she's on here somewhere. She actually helped me a lot in my certification. I'm going to give full credit to her. Um, she was amazing. She got me focused on what I needed to get done and how I needed to get done. But I tell you what, if you get on there and you look at everything, don't get overwhelmed, break it down, chunk it, give yourself deadlines. That's where I went wrong. Give yourself deadlines on when you're going to put things in there, when you're going to have it put together. Um, but even though we're not fully using that certification currently, I'm telling you, contractors are actually coming to us because they want to have us as a subcontractor. And right now with the big federal jobs and with the big state jobs, that's kind of what we wanted. We didn't want to be the prime. So right now locally, like we do some county and we do some small state jobs and we're the prime contractor, um, which, is, which is perfect. That's kind of where we want to be. Um, but I think in the next couple of years, hopefully we're going to do uh, a couple of more bigger jobs with prime contractors that where that certification is really, they're going to be able to really use it um, and take advantage of those where they have, they have to meet this 5% of the, their subcontractors need to be, you know, the uh, woman owned business or a majority owned business kind of thing. So but any questions, and you guys have, you had a few really good questions earlier. I will definitely leave my info in the chat for you guys too. Um, but it, it's it been a journey. And one day I actually, after talking to Maria for a long time, I just kind of locked myself up and got it done. But I tell you what, give yourself due dates so you don't have to lock yourself up. Just <laughs> chunk it and due dates. There's nothing like a deadline to get things done. Yes. Yes. I believe well, there's a sign on my desk that says the deadline is the inspiration. So, um, you know, and again, we've said from the very beginning when we partnered with We Back and tried to promote the number of certified women-owned businesses in Hawaii, that it is not for the faint at heart. It's a pain in the butt. And when you're working <laughs> so hard every day to make your business run, you know, coming home at the end of the day to face arduous paperwork and getting bounced out of government portals. It's not fun, but that's what we've been here to try to help you. Webeck is a solid partner to help support and encourage. And um, we have to move the dial because the staggering statistic when we started that even though 40% of the businesses in Hawaii are women-owned, only one five 
15 three years ago were the number of certified women-owned businesses, which is just, you know, missing all those contracting opportunities. And um, so we've been on a mission with the YWCA, with WeBec, uh, with Maria, you know, um, to uh, try to really move the dial there to expand the economic opportunities for our women-owned businesses. Yeah, I feel like when I got my certification, there was only like 24 of us in the state. Yeah. And out of those 24, I think there's only a couple that are actually construction. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we have a long way to go. And once the government sees us making the big jumps, then they're going to just send more our way. Absolutely. And you know, even though you think of uh, construction companies, Department of Defense contractors getting those big contracts, not true. There is a lot of federal money that comes into our community that traditional women-owned businesses can benefit for. For example, here in Maui, we have the Space Force and Air Force Research. They bring distinguished visitors here all the time. They have to cater events. They do um, amenity baskets, omiyagi, which they would put either give lay or put chocolates in or, you know, specialty items, they can check the boxes that they need to, to show that they're researching out and getting minority owned women owned businesses. So, and I just went to an Alaska Airlines event since they are merging with Hawaiian Airlines or acquiring them or whatever. And the chocolate they give out is a women owned business. So from Alaska. So I'm thinking now that they're acquiring Hawaiian, they better give out Hawaiian women owned business <laughs> chocolate as well. I wrote a Daniel, a little email to that effect. Yeah. And so we have actually on We Back West have 36 women business owners certified for Hawaii. You more than double. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a great, yes, yeah, that's a there's great still, number. There's so long way to go, but boy, we've, you know, when you double the statistic, that's, uh, that's significant. Yes. Yeah, and I have to echo what Leslie said. You're going to find, it, it's not just construction, it's like the littlest thing too. You're going to find something for everyone whenever these things come out. And definitely, and I know that they've done series with you guys before is register for Sam.gov. You know, you, if you get into those things, you can search and you can find where they're at. And like how um, Maria mentioned earlier with the corporations, get on their portals. You know, I have that on my list. I still need to do the portal thing, but we have so much going on. It's, it's far down on my list. So I'll eventually get there, but there are so many different ways anybody can get them. Yes, one of our jewelry makers um, got contacted off the Weback procurement list to make some jewelry for the Disney property on Oahu. We're not sure what that looks like. We don't know if it's um, if it's ears with a hibiscus or what. But anyway, um, so they really do connect procurement, diversity and equity procurement of big companies with our small businesses. Yeah, I just received kudos from one of our corporates. She's with um, Banner Health. She's with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield here in Arizona. We have a woman-owned company that does the barricades. You know, the big sign that blocks you from going here and there here in Arizona. So a lot of our corporates look at the women business owners and they're actually looking that it's not just a male industry. When you start seeing women business owners walking the plank when it comes to construction like i said earlier i had i just it was a big shout out at the conference to hear from someone uh that got a million dollar contract in construction and it's a woman a legitimate woman-owned business so kudos to you brandy because it is a it is a different field right and you always will have to prove yourself but the corporations can actually see it you know, uh, connect with Hensel Phelps. They're actually one of our corporates. And yeah, uh, no, no, we did we did hook up with them. We actually bid on a job with them a couple of times, and they're just not winning them. So we'll, we'll keep trying. They did okay. reach out to us. Thank you. I appreciate awesome. that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It'll eventually come. It'll come. Yes, I'm gonna tell you, it'll come, and then just be ready for it because it will come.
It's the old exponential curve. As things that build momentum, it just continues to grow exponentially. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Brandy, and your experience and taking questions. Um, and and uh, many thanks to Maria as well for all that information. Um, I'm just I'm just seeing one question. Is the fee only one time or per year? You did mention that was annual because there's the recertification going with that. So just Correct. making sure I've got all those questions answered. I do have on the screen um, that MEDB, Maui Economic Development Board, does offer a business assistance as well. So if you have any questions and to help you connect with Webeck West and to um, apply for that scholarship as well, um, our email address is there, info at hightechmaui.com. Um, we can pop that in the chat as well. Um, Leilani, if you can help me there as well. Um, we're also asking for feedback, and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll share those details shortly as well. We've also got a couple of dates to save um, coming up. On April 15, there's going to be a Maui Founders Mix for Blue Startups who do uh, an annual or biannual cohort for startup companies looking to take their business to the next level. Um, look out for information on that, and it's a good networking opportunity. April 26, we have a mentor protege program, which is for those businesses who are looking to work with Department of Defense and for opportunities to become a subcontractor for government military. So we'll send out details on that. And on May 9th, we have another Maui Tech Ohana, which is an opportunity to network uh, in, in the evening session with our guest speakers from Maui Food Innovation Center. I think that it's going to be very interesting to hear about all that they've been doing with um, food technology, as well as you know their response to the, to the Maui wildfires as well. So they're coming up. Just keep, but make sure you keep us on your um, subscribe list so you'll get those details. You can also get that at medb.org. Our feedback: We uh, can want your suggestions. Um, you know, what can we? How how was it? How can we continue to improve for you? What topics would you like to hear? So um, there's the link. If you can post that, um, you'll see that in the chat as well. I'm hoping. Let me see if Leilani is going to help me there. Let me pop that on there. Yeah, she put the right. in there. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm a bit oh I'm a bit late there with seeing that. All right, perfect. Thank you, Leilani. And a, a, a big thank you to everyone making the time. It's not easy out of your day to be here and joining us live and for your interaction. We really greatly appreciate it. We have a bunch of resources. Um, that we can send out to you along with Maria's slide deck, who's kind, Maria's kindly shared um, that with you. So we'll make sure you get those resources as, as someone who's registered and made the time to be here. Thank you very much and uh, aloha and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much, Brandy, for sharing. And of course, always thank you to my colleagues, Annette and Leilani.